Okay. Um, everybody should know that in the time of the Buddha, there were bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, the female equivalent to the four monks. And because it seemed to have died away, when Buddhism comes to the West and people demand uh, fairness, equality, that it seemed to be that, you know, why should we not have bhikkhunis? So ever since you know, our particular tradition of Theravada came to the West, it's been a question which has been discussed. I've been to many conferences and we talked and talked and talked and talked over the issue. And one of the important uh, moments was in the uh, conference in Hamburg a couple of years ago, sponsored by the His Holiness the Dalai Lama, where some of the best research was presented. And when I saw that research, I couldn't go there myself, uh, but uh, some of my close friends went there. And we saw that research which was done. There seemed to be no obstacle, no uh, legal vinaya, that's the monk's monastic code, the nun's monastic code, no legal obstacle to that ordination. It was only whether you had the will to do so. So it's uh, over in Perth where I live, as well as our monastery for monks. Uh, many years ago we purchased about 600 acres of beautiful forests for women. Uh, it was our goal, not just my goal, but the whole community, uh, monastic and lay. It was their goal to you know, have a nun's monastery. And so it happened that we had these very well-trained nuns who had been keeping the ten precepts for so many years. And then they asked for bhikkhuni ordination. So it wasn't as if that I initiated this, you know, sitting down in my room and saying, OK, let's have bhikkhunis. This was like a response to a long process which has been happening in the West and the fact that uh, in Australia, you know, we have people who have been trained, ready to go. So once we realised that uh, it was possible and these uh, bhikkhunis were ready to go, there was no ethical reason, legal reason, or any reason not to ordain them. So we had to make all the arrangements, which you know, took a long time. And of course, uh, in the strict Vinaya, I can't ordain a bhikkhuni. A bhikkhuni has to be ordained by another bhikkhuni. And there are bhikkhunis in Theravada tradition around. And so we invited all these bhikkhunis from overseas with uh, uh, Sister Aya Tataloka as a preceptor. They all came together in October and we did this wonderful ordination. And all of the people in Perth and this, you know, Australia as well were very excited. We had actually done a bhikkhuni ordination uh, in our tradition according to the Vinaya and according to the, the will of the locals. So everybody was very, very happy. It's only later on that some people found out and they got very embarrassed about it and caused a lot of problems. And I can't really sort of see what they were doing, uh, creating problems when you know, you're having a beautiful ceremony. According to the Vinaya, no faults there at all, of uh, allowing uh, somebody, I don't care if it's a male or female, to get a higher ordination in Buddhism. And it was very inspiring to see that. So. My contribution is over-exaggerated. I was only part of the process of many, many people. But just like in any convoy, it's the, it's the car in front that gets all the bugs on the windscreen. Because I was in front, I got all the bugs. <laughs> Smashing into my face. <laughs>